Next from Springfield, Christine Rodonio, the Republican Senate Minority Leader, reacts to Governor Rauner's budget address. This runs about 12 minutes. Um, in general, just in my reaction to the speech, is I thought it was a good one. I thought it was a fair assessment of what our choices are right now, given the extremely serious financial condition that we're in. I thought it was delivered without rancor and with a sincere invitation once again to the Democrats to come to the table and negotiate a good path forward for this state. So with that, I'll take any questions. Why do schools deserve this privileged status above the other needs of children? It's kind of funny to even be asked that question. I mean, everyone under this dome for years and years and years has talked about the importance of education funding on many, many levels. It's good for the individual. It's good for the economy. A well-trained workforce creates jobs. Um, and it all, we also can guarantee our students and our parents some certainty going forward. It's one service that almost everyone in the state uses. Um, everyone has said it's critically important and we've learned more over the years about how important early childhood as well, which is included this year in that special category. That you could say that and we did that last year, but I think that it did provide for most of the residents of our state a sense of stability that is desperately needed here. If we can't even tell um, parents and employers that the schools are going to open, what will that do to our economy? Well, we have a certain amount of money that's coming in. This is a question of allocation. And as you know, allocation is about priorities. I think the governor said today what people have said before him but not actually done, that education funding is a priority. He is making it the priority. Your priority is only as good as the money you put behind it. Well, it hasn't fallen by the wayside. The fact of the matter is we've been <coughs> limited, as you know, by court decisions. Um, I guess President Collerton can say that he was right, and um, we are saying let's adopt that model, let's move forward. Um, the savings are significantly less than what we had hoped for previously, but they will amount to about a billion dollars a year. The governor wisely is not counting that revenue this particular year. But there is an open invitation for the Senate President to please come forward and let's work together and get a bill um, up. Now, he's beginning to equivocate a little, saying, well, gee, it, I can't pass it. Well, I mean, it passed easily last time. The question that needs to be asked is, why can't you pass it? I mean, we will help. Well, they weren't left out. And there is a budget book, and we'll all need to take some time to go through that. The MAP grants, I believe, are funded at the FY15 year level. There is a reduction in the higher ed line. However, there's also an addition of an, an innovation fund, if you will, that will encourage some competition um, or some um, competition to achieve better practices to help get our kids out of school on time and better prepared for the economy. So it wasn't left out. Of the choice, that presumes that we come together and come up with a reasonable plan. The plan, again, that the governor does not want to see, what I would call the extreme plan, is the one that um, would, he would have to just do the cutting on his own. Would you support the extreme plan, giving up that legislative power to the governor, if that's what it means? We have no choice. I think people don't understand that, that there is only a certain amount of money we cannot continue to spend more than is coming in. That is absolutely not what I want to do. I don't think it's what the governor wants to do. He doesn't want to have to make drastic cuts all by himself. But if there's no alternative, we owe it to the taxpayers of this state to stop the bleeding. And that's what that does. You remember when I asked uh, Speaker Madigan about the unfunded MAP grant bill that they just had, he said, well, then explain to me how the governor can increase spending for K-12 education. Why is that not Okay, well, again, we have a certain amount of money that comes in. It's about $32 billion. The question of priorities is, is how you allocate that budget. You can say you're, until you're blue in the face that education funding is your priority, but if you don't fund it, it's not. That's the number one priority. 
Once we fund education, there's still a certain amount left over, and the governor does propose in his plan to fund MAP grants at the FY15 year level. And, you know, that will assume that we work together to come up with some savings. Um, if not, then he'll have to just take the pen to the budget and balance those numbers however he can do it. There's no question about the merits of the MAP program. It's a question of how do we pay. Would you be in favor of moving up bill? I mean, two groups that are really being damaged by the standoff are higher education and the social service industry. The other day, there was a press conference and members of higher education said their schools are at the breaking point. And once we lose some of these institutions, even if it's resolved in April, once they're under, they're under. They just can't come back to life in any short order. Would you be in favor of moving some bills on an emergency basis to get these schools at least where they can still function until something's resolved? Yeah, I think we've had some proposals to do that, but it is, for example, procurement reform is an area ripe for savings, and it very directly impacts higher ed. So if we can get some of those procurement reforms through, that will help them manage their costs. Um, obviously, we want to get higher ed funded. The governor, in his um, moderate, unextreme plan, funds it at 80% of what it was previously, but again, recognizes that higher ed is an area where there's room for improvement in terms of the efficiencies. Governor's extra budget authority start right away, or is it just going forward? In other words, I mean, we're eight months in, just right. year 16. So, what do you do about that as we're looking now at this year 17? Well, obviously, it would only start when it was passed, but the same solutions that we have for fiscal year 17 are the solutions for fiscal year 16. <coughs> I think we've kind of blown past that deadline already. I mean, we have to, um, we can try to close the gap for this year, but we are where we are. You know, whether it's one, two, 18 months, I don't think is the relevant question. The relevant question is, how do we get this back, state back on a track of sustainable financing and providing services? Well, the fact of the matter is if we pass the education budget, we fully fund the foundation level. And remember, the foundation level is what we call the resource equalizer formula in this state in order to equalize those um, issues that require some districts to have more spending. They would be fully funded at the foundation level, yes. Remember, CPS, though, has lost students. You know, we talk so much about people leaving the state. The fact of the matter is we have fewer kids to educate. So we've got to right size these systems. So they will get the funding, whether or not that amount is more or less than they had last year. Last year depends on a combination of factors, including the student population, the EAV, and the number of poverty students when you apply the formula. Bankruptcy and takeover legislation doesn't seem to be traction. What's the impact of that? Well, I would agree. First off, I think they still are a district that needs to have some significant streamlining. Um, they've made some strides. They seem to always pull a rabbit out of the hat when they say they're at the end of the line and in a crisis. I don't disagree that Chicago has a very difficult situation, but the problem is they haven't recognized that the solution to that is, is not going to be easy either. But we're willing to work with them, and the governor has been from day one. Senator, though, the criticism of the governor is that he's saying, you have to do it my way before I will give you what you want. Is there any room for compromise to say, look, so that we don't devastate these institutions, let's go ahead and fund them with the promise that we'll institute reforms as we go along, and then if you, on the other side, don't respond, don't go along with these reforms, then we can have another battle royale a year from now. Well, I, I think he made it, has made it crystal clear several times, and he did again today. He doesn't have a set list of things that have to pass. There's no litmus test. He's provided a number of, of items out there that could be passed, including a far scale down pension reform bill, 
you know, some of the workers' comp um, provisions, which apply, again, to government, not just private industry. So he has been absolutely open to compromise. I mean, the extreme, he's not been extreme at all in saying it has to be a certain set of items. We have invited again and again and again the Democrats to come in and, and participate, and that's what we continue to lack. But what is the failed approach is to just do a tax hike and nothing else. We already tried that, and it, we're worse off. So that's just not an option. Because the power that he has under existing law to manage those numbers is extremely limited. We need to take the, some of those limitations away. As the governor pointed out, they've done that in other states. We've done it other times. I would also point out to the Democrats, they've had lots of opportunity to use their super majorities if they don't agree with that. What do you think about the notion that Democrats don't actually have super majorities? The speaker stands up and says, we don't have a working super majority. Well, then why did they fight for it? <laughs> you know, I mean, you, what's the point? You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois. 